right, gents, good morning, good evening. Tanuj, how, how are you feeling? I, it's okay that I'm a bit sleepy and having a sore throat. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I wonder. I wonder if having been in isolation and then coming out to, uh, or you know, having been at home and then coming to be around a bunch of other people, um, makes everyone a bit more susceptible to to just regular colds and things, just because they've been, they haven't been exposed. I wonder. Maybe for for some reason, many of them are having cold and fevers simultaneously. Oh, oh, around okay yeah a lot of people around you are as well yeah okay yeah there's there could be something to that <laughs> there's chin me good morning all right all right well good hey, this is the first time that i'm meeting I, I think this is the first time i'm meeting back with all of you Post go live of Layer Five NG. Uh, I, if I recall, Nikhil and the rest of you have been holding down the fort. Um, so, uh, so nice. So you know, I, congrats to all of you for Layer Five NG. It's amazing. It really, it really look, it's, it certainly stands out compared to the competition. Nice. Okay. All right. I'll take a, some names down. The vendor whose last name I'm still trying to figure out how many K's and T's there are in there. I can't remember. Yeah, I was close. I was. Okay. Yeah, you were close, really close. <laughs> <laughs> I get some points. I get some points for. And Jinmei. Um, last your last name's fairly short, correct? I thought it was uh, meta like this. But, uh, kill uh, Tanuj. your last name. I always want to put in the uh, the extra G. Um, good. Okay. Well, so some items. I think each of you probably have a few different items. Well, each of you I know have a few different items that you've been working through. Um, uh, some of you, we've caught up a little bit and have talked about uh, part of your shifting focus and um, and some starting on some fresh projects or whether they're totally fresh or fresh to you. Uh, so so that's that's good. Some of the those discussions will trickle in here. We'll end up focusing on some of those. Um, one of the ones that, that makes a lot of sense to focus on here is the, the fact that, well, one of them is the fact that there's a number of items to tie off on layer 5NG. And so <clears throat> um, there's a lot of things that we postponed so we could um, go live. I shouldn't say a lot, like there are a handful of those items that we, we do intend to circle back to. And some of you have already fixed some of them. And so, so that'll be a topic, um, the topic of discuss.layer5io, uh, we, should, we should get in and talk about what we're looking to accomplish there and, and uh, what that looks like, what, what we think that that ends up looking like in the end. Who, who has other topics other than these? Oh, I think the uh, last one, like the first one from the previous meeting, the uh, the review of the new site by Augustine. Uh, I think uh, Yash, uh, we asked Yash to create the issues. I'm not sure if it created them. Right. Yeah. He, I think, so yeah, near as I could see, I think Yash created, it was either one or two issues. Um, one of them had. Um, any number of issues, like a, a few issues bundled up inside. Okay, good. Okay, so so <clears throat> so we can re yeah. So starting off by reviewing um, kind of the audit that uh, Augustine had done. 
I think you, you guys went over that spreadsheet in the past. Um, Josh, were you saying, were you bringing that up to say that there were a few items that he had pointed out that maybe we weren't sure if we should go execute on or not? Uh, yeah, like I mean, uh, in the last meeting, we discussed that Augustine would have a review, like uh, find out things that needs to be changed or something. And uh, he mentioned them in the spreadsheet and that needed to be picked up. So it's uh, more or less uh, the same as the post uh, go live uh, issues that are already created as well and a few other things. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um... And uh, uh, just one thing apart from that, uh, the sheet that you shared with me from that. Uh, for finding the uh, 404s, four what I can say is the yeah. unreachable pages for the websites. So like for layer five did the most of the uh, those, but for, uh, so should I go on with the meshery website as well? Like there are a lot of meshery website pages that are unreachable and are uh, causing those issues. Yeah, so, so the one, yep, very good. Uh... Let me put that down as a topic as well, so 404. And we got this, we had the other topic around preview builds and any other topics. So um, Chinmay, I think you have, there's, there's a topic probably around rotational uh, banners, hero, uh, hero banners. And actually, um, Chinmay, do you mind pinging Austin, Augustine, asking him if he'll join? Nice, thank you. Okay, uh, well, well, I guess we'll go top down. So, so before we go into this, this sheet, we, if we look at images not showing on Twitter, it, Josh, do you want to? Yeah. So, tell like, us after after Nikhil Spear, is it the? Uh, so, like, uh, the thing is, if I say, if I look at the, uh, what I can say is, uh, in the inspect, if I inspect it and find it on the, uh, uh, code, then it's showing that there is a Twitter OG image, but, uh, it doesn't show up. So, like, can you just check once? Uh, like, I guess uh, Nikhil Spear added a few. If I'm not wrong, yeah, I tried checking, but uh, it was not showing for me. Ah, uh, yeah. So this was the issue with the SVG and PNG, uh, as Nikhil stated in on Slack. Yeah. Uh, I will. Okay. So th this the the home page then it it's using an SVG. Is that right? I'll just check once a sec. I, I don't think that it's only Twitter that will have the issue with the SVGs. Um, I've, I've seen LinkedIn having an issue as well. Um, uh, no, I don't think it's the SVG for the homepage. It's a PNG. For okay. homepage, uh, yeah. I checked no, it. Yeah, no. Nikhil. So, yeah. So the thing is, uh, the issue is somewhat... I'm not able to understand. Like for a few of the feature images, it's coming up. Like before submitting the PI, I tried for I tried in LinkedIn uh, for one of the blog posts, and it was coming up, but it wasn't coming up for other blog posts. But one thing was like uh, previously on the for the OG image uh, content for other blog posts, it was layer five image, but after the update, it's showing the correct feature image as per the dev tools from co uh, but even though do, after doing that update for some of the links you can say yeah the the feature image that is coming up is still the layer 5 one or it's blank yeah i haven't tried on twitter specifically yeah like uh, if you go to the blog only the first blog that we have 
yeah this one is coming up currently in linkedin i have checked it on linkedin it comes currently on linkedin like the page name it comes up. but for uh, the blog post of michael it doesn't come that's an issue okay so, so okay that's interesting so um for this this latest blog post it the um feature in it well well, how should I say the OG, the open graph image is a PNG, the first, well, I, let me take that back and say, actually, I guess I didn't confirm, but this particular image right here, this thumbnail, first one on the page is a PNG. And is that the same one that's used as the OG? Yes, it's, you can do a control F to find it. Oh, nice. uh, so for the Michael's blog as well, uh, the image is PNG, but it doesn't show up on LinkedIn. Right, right. And so the update that you guys are referring to, that's with respect to the React. Uh, what, what is that update? Yeah, so after my update, like previously, uh, it was showing the layer five logo that the layer five logo with the dark background. But after the update, we are getting the actual thumbnail of feature image on the at least the meta stack. But in, on sharing on social media sharing, we are still not getting the correct. Image. Uh, yeah. So I'll just uh, I'll just uh, explain what. So the thing was like when I was uh, adding those images for the individual blog uh, blogs. Uh, so it was showing uh, it. Uh, it was showing cor correctly on the uh, uh, on the like yeah the code, but uh, it it wasn't showing on uh, LinkedIn at that point. Like it uh, at that point the recent blog post wasn't showing. So I replaced them with the uh, default image that is the layer five logo, and then Nikhil updated like Nikhil uh, made a PR uh, again to revert and make the blog images for. Uh, all the blogs uh, and but uh, so uh, by uh, what I can say by luck at that point the recent blog post uh, image was coming up so it was thought that all of the blog post images would be coming up but isn't it isn't uh, coming up so that's the problem so like I tried it but it didn't go well before we go live I tried it but so I reverted the changes and made the default image go on for the blogs. Gotcha. Okay. It makes sense. Um, hmm. One of the differences between the two blog posts is the fact that the second blog post has white space in its file name. Now, uh, let's look. So here's Michael's. We'll go look at this. Now, so the title of the, I don't know if you guys can see it, but the title is Michael space Goodfeller space hyphen. Space. So there's, so that's one difference that could possibly be throwing off the, that, that seems so you know odd that that would throw off LinkedIn and Twitter both. This is a PNG, it is defined here. So we've got both of them covered, the open graph image, the, the Twitter image. They both point to the same graphic. Uh, I don't know, this, that, that's one item to try. Um, other items that you guys can think of to try? I'm pasting a link in the chat. Are you implementing the SEO component like this? Okay, so I think we are not defining the prop types for the component for each of the props individually. But okay, so one thing is like uh, the thing which we said just now about the path name. 
I think for POD block it's coming up, but POD like if you check the measurement, yeah, our measurement now that's also PNG, but the path name doesn't have a space. The file name, I guess. The file name does not have white space. Yeah. Okay, and and the image shows in. Yes, the image shows in LinkedIn Inspector at least. Let me turn it right there. Okay. All right. That that. That corroborates the story a bit, not not definitive, but but yeah. And then um, Tanuj, of your question, this is I was aimed a bit at Josh, I suppose, in terms of how the SEO component itself is being configured. Yeah, because uh, here I'm seeing of the uh, that they are using the site URL also, so that and not a relative URL. So maybe that is the problem. Hmm. Yeah, so like it was initially the site URL and I changed it to have the, uh, yeah, I'll just check if it's so. Okay, so it's another item to explore is relative versus absolute URL. I, but uh, I don't think uh, that is causing this issue because uh, initially when it was the site URL, it wasn't showing up uh, the default images as well. But when I changed it to the relative URL, it started showing up uh, whatever we are getting till now. Okay. So I'll just check once again, yeah. There's another thing that will cause us some pain here, and that is uh, redirects. So one thing that um, you'll notice on this blog post that that's working. So this is a PNG. It doesn't have any uh, white space in the file name, and it is a relative URL. Um, it works. One item to note is that there's redirection that's happening. So when I take... Um, this address that doesn't have a slash, when th that page is visited, our Gatsby configuration will redirect the requester to a page with a, a trailing slash. So if we, if we open up this link that has no slash, um, in my browser, it doesn't show as having a slash, but that doesn't mean that um, other user agents aren't being redirected. If I put a slash after it, uh, I get you know, the, the slash removed. So the redirect may be happening very quickly. Anyway, point is like um, redirection can be an issue as well, a cause of an issue. Uh, so is that a Gatsby redirect? Because it uh, there is no redirects defined for that page itself. Yeah, I think. Uh... If I remember correctly, when uh, we got the theme, there was uh, this uh, something like this defined in the Gatsby node. Uh, I don't remember it exactly, but uh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. It's it's a curious thing. Like J Jekyll, as a comp Jekyll had changed its behavior <clears throat> between its 3.8, 3.8.5 to 4.0. They changed the behavior where I can't remember if they started adding all slashes to all or if they started removing them, but it was, a, it was a pain in the rump because we needed to go to 4.0 because we wanted to use a new plugin to help with, I forget with what, but, um, uh, but then we had to go through a lot of the pages and I, it's been like a year, so I don't remember the exact solution, but, but we ended up having to, to deal with that because the static site compiler, compiler itself it universally wanted to change the behavior. Uh. Yeah, so in the get speed node, I can see there is the thing replacing the slash would result in an empty string, which is invalid. Uh, so that's defined itself. So maybe we'll, if it makes sense to everyone here, maybe we'll leave some of this investigation for 
or these are probably to do items to go off. And sometimes it's sometimes the, the challenge is, well, it's not the fact that it was the relative URL versus the absolute up until we something else was changed. And then yes, then then it's a like it, it can be a combination of the problems. Um, so, so yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So what um, I don't think we'll figure it out here other than these are positive steps forward. <clears throat> Um, things to try to rule out as well. This, so some of this is trial and error, but also some of this is um, we should be able to look this stuff up. Like the, you know, there are millions of other sites that you know that run into similar issues. So there should be a definitive response. Like like the, this uh, searching for white space in the file name and the, and the open graph image you know headers for LinkedIn shares. Like what? What does that return for a Google search? And so, okay. A anything else we want to cover here? It's, it's a frustrating. It's a challenge. It's frustrating. One of the frustrating things about it is that <clears throat> um, as we've switched over sites, it, some of our older social posts. Uh, will go, they'll now show an empty, um, it, where, whereas it was showing a preview of the site before with a specific image for that specific piece of news, now it's blank. Um, yeah, it's not, not the end of the world, but it's just annoying. Uh, <laughs> one of the ways in which I see that um, myself is when looking at like something like this, like, hey, I, a while ago, I shared the fact that we were, you know, announcing a partnership with HashiCorp. And so this particular, there's a couple of issues here. One is that when we moved over sites, the, the, the title of the post is what's used to form the URL. And that wasn't exactly the case with all of our other posts. And so the old reference is layer five hyphen HashiCorp, but the new post on the new site is layer five and HashiCorp. And so I've recently put in a redirect, but even with that redirect, um, the image isn't being retrieved. So. So th this was something that we had shared on the layer five um, feed about nine months ago. So it's still. Uh, I think even if we fix the issue, there is one problem with the redirect because we are doing client side redirect for all of the blog posts. Uh, so I'm not because I'm not sure if there is ever going to. Uh, the thumbnail will ever show because I tested it for a slash landscape and nothing was showing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same for all the shorthand URLs that are easy to remember so you can share with people. They don't. So that, that's another area of investigation. Like, there's, there's potentially multiple things that need to be changed. Okay, um, next up is this light box component. Um, to uh, uh, no, uh, I haven't started working on it. It's uh, just a reminder for me to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Um, did, is there a, okay, I have, um, is there a plan of action in terms of which, uh, whether or not to go seek an existing plugin or put some JavaScript sort of universally? I, yeah, there was a, a light box component for React. I was thinking of using that only. I'll share the link. So when, when, we, when we think about that, um, the reason that this is being raised up is that if you do 
you know, if you, if you create a, a blog entry or something else, like here, here's an example of an image. Um, the image, this is an SVG, it doesn't really matter. Um, you, as a user, if you wanna zoom in, well, one is not linked to, but if, even if it was linked to, it would open up a new window, you know, because you'd, you'd be linked directly to the image and using Lightbox or something similar, you'd be able to let the user pull up the image in a modal, zoom in and out without them leaving the site or without them having to go to a page dedicated to just this image. Cool, so that's what, that's what that's about. So we're looking at a... And then, um, Nikhil, is this you on, or is this yeah. Tanuj on the news section? Yeah, the, so basically Chinmay added this section. So I wanted to ask, would we add it in the home section? I'll share my screen how, how it looks. Yeah, there it is. Nice. Yeah, it, it looks it looks nice. The, there's one. I think there's only one item really, and it's uh, it is the aspect ratio of the images. Um, pretty pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there two things we can do. Either we can keep white space around or we can crop it like how we do it for the nav bar. Yep. Um, I'm not sure. I, uh, so the white space will work in this case because there's a shadow around the entire card. So people could see, even if it's white on white, it'll be white with a shadow and then white. So just like the, the new stack one there in the middle, um, that, that seems to work. Even that one's aspect ratio is off as well. Um, if we did what the other path, which is, you know, cropping the overflow, um, that, you know, that, that would probably work fine as well. It's, um, th I think we should go, we should go with the, the former. We should go with, um, we should test out and see if just maintaining aspect ratio and, uh, having it fit the uh, card as much as we can is the way to go, is to try it. Do 100% on either width or height and then let the other one be auto and see how they, see how it looks. So Jinmay, are you working on something else? Or if you are working, I can uh, try it out. Yes, yes, you can go ahead with it, that. Okay, sure. Cool, cool, good deal. So, uh, Tanusha, I was just writing down to try the fitting of the content first, before, and then that doesn't work. Moving over to cutting it off. Nice. Uh, Yash filed a couple of issues. So, well, Yash, I don't think is, is on the call. Um, Chinmay, can I can I use you again to uh, poke Yash, Pandy? Yeah, just see if he's available. Of the couple of items that he had filed, um, I don't know that. I think actually, Chinmay, are you working on some of those? Like, I think he filed a couple in the same one. 
So one, two, three, four, five. Which is fine. I, I, don't, I don't know that no, the other Yash is looking at him. I, I don't know that they require much discussion. So, so on the 404s, um, so there's a the spreadsheet that we've been using to track some of the tying off some of the items. Um, okay, there's a, there's a different spreadsheet. Josh, now I don't recall. Different spreadsheet that we were using that came from Google, Google Analytics that was saying there were any number of uh, missing you know, links. A lot of those started with meshery.layer5.io. Yeah. Those are things that I don't know that you're going to, I'm not sure if you'll need to deal with them. So previously the. Yeah, there's the uh, layer by coded build. Uh, can you just go back? Yeah, the first one in quick access. Uh, in quick, oh, access, okay. quick access, the first sheet. Layer five. Oh, there yeah. we go. Okay. So examples like this one where there are some links coming from somewhere that are pointing to meshery.layer5.io, which was the formerly where we published documentation. And we've since changed the documentation to docs.meshery.io. So I don't know if these 404s rank negatively for layer5.io in terms of SEO. I, I don't know. Um, it, it's also difficult to find who, where these links are sourced at, like who's pointing to these. Um, it, it's one of those things that to, to deal with it holistically, which is an accurate thing, is that we would put in a, a redirect for things that are pointed here to redirect them to docs.meshery.io. Um, I don't know if that type of a redirection is possible within Gatsby. A subdomain like that. So when we go, like one of the big questions is then, like where are these coming from? One of them could be the individual repositories in Layer Five IO and all the GitHub repos. Sometimes they'll have a hyperlink that pointed to the documentation, and that hyperlink may be old. Okay, so he, here's an example. Yeah, so this is bad. Okay, so Josh, one thing that we can for sure do and will help us, uh, the site, is that each of these are pointed to meshery.layer5.io slash docs. So within our own site, we can certainly search for and remove or replace. Okay. Yeah, that, that can be, I can like that we can do in the code base itself. We can search in VS code and we can remove those things. Nice. Because <laughs> uh, I just uh, like, I looked at the analytics and it was the seventh most visited page, the 404 page. Fudge. <laughs> <So. laughs> <laughs> 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 Son of a gun. All right. All right. Rotational hero banners. Um, so Yash isn't with us, nor is Vinid. Uh, has have people seen this work? Yes, I, I, I just saw it afternoon. Uh, the both of the PRs. 
one of them, I, so I think Yash fixed one, one of the issues. Uh, Yash, Yash recently fixed an issue on, on his new banner, the alt, this alternate banner. Um, he's going to refactor his to fit into this new rotation system, this new linear rotation system. Linear in so much as um, when someone goes to the site that it wouldn't just be random, randomly calculated which banner to show, but rather... Uh, I haven't looked, but um, Vineeth will have used local storage of the visitor's browser to store, you know, I guess a key that points to the last banner that they saw. Let's see, so constant banners. Why is it defined as a constant? Key zero. If the banner, why is he? Why is he using session storage, not local storage? Uh, so I think this might lead to uh, for uh, this might lead for a single session. I I just have to check it on. Yeah, that's a good question. So that that's a good question, and then the other one is just the what's the logic that he's using? So it's if the if their current banner, uh, so the logic is using this. Uh, this is for the yeah the linear rotation. Uh, it's uh, uh, completing a circle. So like the number goes above, it gets the modulus back. So like okay. yeah, it's it's a simple rot uh, circular rotation. Okay, okay, that 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 sounds good. So then I guess the question is just. Oh, the question is just uh, yeah, a session based versus local local storage i think he has answered that in his comment like yes ask the same question on the ps if you go back yeah although so session storage refers to window dot session storage so it's still Okay. So yeah, still it looks like he's using session storage, not local storage. Any any more? If you're using local storage, the site doesn't need to request that permission from the user, correct? Not unless you're requesting like a gig of space or something like that. Uh, I don't think so. Most probably it should work without any The other the other aspect of this system is that there's a new banner directory under sections home that you'll end up creating putting your component there. Import that banner. Okay. Uh, so I think we'll have to go with the local storage because the session storage will be like no longer valid if the we kill the browser once. So like it's uh, for uh, you visit the website single uh, once and you constantly keep on reloading the page. You can get it different all the time, but once. So uh, is there a need to use the local storage or we can go ahead with the session storage because uh, Anyways, if you are visiting website today and again you come and visit it tomorrow, it isn't necessary that we show different images, or is it so? It would be. It's ideal if we show. It's not critical. So yeah, to answer your question succinctly is, it's not the end of the world if they end up. If the majority of the time people end up seeing the same initial banner, um, <clears throat> even and the same user comes back and they end up seeing the same banner. Uh, because they were either in private browsing mode or they were using a different device or they were using a different browser on the same device or they had just cleared their cache. Um, not, not the end of the world, but if it's of no hindrance to the user for us to use local storage, then, yeah, then it would be ideal if we were a little more intelligent with what we're displaying to them. Um, 
eventually we'll want to be a lot more intelligent. We'll want to do some interesting things with what, who to show, what to show to whom. <clears throat> so maybe, so yeah, Josh, that's a good question to ask is, hey, what, what challenges do we have in moving to local storage? Other comments, or are we ready for discuss.layer5.io? Okay, so we've got about 15 minutes left. This is probably, like, it's okay that we don't discuss Get Nighthawk necessarily. Um, Unless um, Vinayak or Chinme, or does any, anyone on the call had? Oh, Vinayak's on the call. <laughs> well, fine then, Vinayak. Let's, let's get let's hit this first before we spend the rest of the time on these other two items. Vinayak, how far off are we on Get Nighthawk? Um, th this Thursday is the CNCF um, Sig Network call, so we'll want to do an update there. On the back end, Abhishek has been working on, on a few different things. So he'll have an update for the, the pipeline and the back end of the project. But on the front end, so one item for me has been, and Austin has worked on this as well, is uh, to get a vote out on the logo. And Vinayak, for you and Chinme and others on the site, how far off are we? Uh, okay, so basically most of the things are complete according to the mock-up. Uh, the one main thing that is remaining is uh, still the nav bar. And uh, the other thing uh, would be the footer a little bit, but uh, I, I think I spoke to you about the footer and uh, uh, we decided to go with this one. Yeah, it's not to be, yep, yep, this will, um, by the way, if, if we're able to, drop this onto a row onto its own or like th this is of the least importance of what we're showing or not it's not the least important but just um looks a bit from, yeah yeah it's yeah it looks like it's getting called out as a prominent thing just like the site is so sure uh, i think moving it down uh like uh under these four tabs would be great makes sense one thing, if we end up, if it makes sense to have symmetry between the logo and something else over here, that something else could be a, a dis, you know, a description like um, sort of like this that on the SMP side it's got, uh, or it could be. I guess we don't have a Twitter handle, so it wouldn't be a Twitter handle. Uh, right. Uh, one thing I want to ask that in the Get Night Hawk uh, current footer, we have a lot of links. Uh, I think uh, like getting started resources and all these links. So I, I don't think we right now have anything to link them up to. So can we like uh, have a smaller footer uh, like the one in the SMP SMP website? So yeah, I think uh, so. I think in. It ends up having all, a lot of the same links, but they're not as prominent. They're, they're, a lot of them are down here. And um, yeah, most I think most of those links or all of those links go to an external resource. So, so I think the answer is like, yeah, like, hey, this is a, this is a fine looking um, footer and we don't currently we don't have a lot to tell people or to point them to so so yeah to, to me refactoring is would work fine there's some content that's owed to, to in order to help get the site over the hump like or to get it live uh, one of the thing is that the FAQ section, the the all the three questions have the same answer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. All right. Fine. Let's. Uh, oh, Josh, Josh is getting a chuckle out of this. Let's put more action <laughs> items on Lee. <It's>, uh, <laughs> Josh, I still have an open action item for Josh actually on the other on the current site. Um, I wanted to close it out. I was going to provide a progress report. I typed it out, lost the comment in a browser tab, but uh, FAQs. Okay, so Vinayak, other than the foot, okay, so there's the nav bar and the footer, or the menu bar. After that, is that is about as far as we had gone with the site? So we don't have any blogs yet. So do, do we have a template for what that, the blog posts would look like? Uh, I think when we click on the doc section, it uh, shows a template which is uh, similar to the one we have on meshery.io. Okay, good. Oh, wait, and then say it again. Where on the oh, on the doc section? Okay, I see. So this would be this could be the collection of individual views. Okay. Test two. Okay. Test. Okay, this makes sense. Yeah. All right, Vinayak. Any? Okay, so. Good, moving on, Vinayak, uh, the deploy service mesh. What, uh, what remains there? Uh, okay, so for the deploy service mesh, I think it still have a little bit of CSS issues uh, in it, like the arrow is still a bit odd. Uh, and other than that, Yes, it breaks apart when uh, like on changing the size of the screen. <laughs> you guys I think ever, we should uh... we should go with a SVG or something else for this because using simple CSS is uh, unable to do the job. Yeah. You can fix the width, I think, then it won't be a problem. Right. Yeah. Um... This reminds me of that simple trick that you can do with your fingers. You know, you like take your thumb and you like pull it up. Ah, you like pull it apart. Right, yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> Tanuj, do you want to do? Uh, you want to take a quick look and see if there's a, uh, a pointer or two to try out a couple of different things to try out with the CSS or or Vinayak, Do you want to? Do you feel comfortable still? Uh, the other one thing that is with the deploy service mesh is that I've linked it to a Google sheet. I, I think I showed it to you, but the only issue is that it is not updating itself automatically. Like it's like we have to run the script and then it updates, uh, with all the new form, uh, form entries that have been made. So we might have to think about a solution, uh, which is like automatic, which automatically sends an email. Uh huh. So, so when people fill in the when when the form is filled in, oh, okay, yeah, it's been a little while. Refresh my memory. People they start to fill in the form, and they can make it halfway, and they're like, "Oh, hey, I want to complete this, so I'll give my email address." Um, conceptually, they end up then completing the form at the end of which they submit it. And now there, the a record is created in Firebase, uh, the database there, about who had filled it in and what their response was, or what their answers were. And then basically, it's we're stuck there unless we go manually run the script. No email goes out and nothing gets persisted to Google Sheets. 
right uh, basically like the google sheet gets updated but we have to do it manually and uh, no email is currently pushed from the google sheet but i think we can easily do that but uh, that would be of no point because we are already like manually updating the google sheet and then the email gets pushed right in front of us so we <laughs> have to think of a different solution for it i think yeah because the point of the email is to tell us hey there's something to go look at and so okay um all right maybe this is a this is a bit of a brainstorming one for something to follow up with you on right um, we like we need we need a service which is like a sort of serverless and this sends us a email directly like getting a email would be the best solution in this one maybe we can check out uh, auto code for this one right because yeah. they have some servers serverless functions code or integromat um auto code i think it it's actually the um the single automation that we've been using there i think is has been down for a couple of weeks even though we haven't made any code change uh so we haven't been being notified of new people joining and i haven't gotten a chance to look at why that's the case so anyway, I, I guess what I'm saying is auto code. Maybe it's, maybe it's this integral map. Yeah, yeah. Like we need basically a more reliable one uh, for this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if people are expecting a response. They're expecting to get an answer. So. Okay. okay Final integral integrometer check. Nice. Okay. Uh, just one thing I would like to add to that page design. Uh, is that uh, we could show up numbers for the like, otherwise it's hard hard to understand what the user is like, if we are moving too strongly then how much does it strongly define this 90 percent or is 80 percent totally um vinayak I, I know that did you have you attempted that just yet to show the label underneath the um uh, no, I haven't attempted to do it, but I think we can like uh, just copy the style that we are using in the above tooltip to like display it, uh, display under it uh, the percentage of the slider. Yep, uh, so it's a good point, Nikhil, because otherwise, yeah, people just they end up ranking one answer. They end up sliding at a certain distance only as it's relative to how strongly they were considering the importance of the other answer. And they don't they don't have an absolute figure to mentally associate it with, like fifty percent, you know, fifty out of a hundred. Yeah. Then, yeah. So. Where is it? There is it. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, and also there's an there's an upper there's a label up here that's like low to high. Rank the importance from low to high. And then while wow, they're dragging, show them the label. Now yeah. So there's a little bit of work on my end that's needed in order to finalize what all the questions are so that we know how many we have and if we really need a second section uh, because in the design it's like there's kind of these two different sections factors of your service mesh functionality like here's the functionality section of what's important to you and then factors of your environments and workloads and then all of those but if we don't have all the questions written down then I could see why the current implementation doesn't have two sections because, okay. So, uh, okay, um, next up is Josh discuss. Yeah, so are we like, uh, I was 
I started looking on hosting it on. So we'll be hosting it on Digital Ocean. Uh, uh, probably not. Like if we do need to, ho or, or sorry, I shouldn't say if we do need to host, but as we look to host, um, probably be on AWS because we have credits there, a lot of them. And uh, uh, so, like, what did you mean that we won't be using? We won't be hosting. Uh, no, I shouldn't say that. Uh, that was silly. <laughs> like, uh, yes, we will be hosting or. Uh, actually, uh, unless the pricing is ridiculously cheap, which <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which, <you> know, <laughs> which I don't think it is necessarily. So, hundred a month for like five of us to access. I to, think like, we we should try hosting it on own. It would be better, I guess. And so, I, after that, I haven't looked at what the option, like uh, what the deployment options are. Um, uh, so there is an option uh, named community deployment where uh, they would deploy it on digital ocean and provide you with the uh, server, uh, but you'll have to pay something like $5 the digital ocean hosting fee per month. Mm -hmm. And okay. then there is an option where you do it entirely on your own. So you deploy it on your own server. Thanks. And the deploying your own server that requires a database. Yeah. Okay. And can be running in Docker. That's good. Um, nice. Okay. Then let's get you an AWS account and in conversation with Abhishek. Uh, so we can, yeah, we've got a, a couple of small EC2 instances today that are running um, Docker. Um, yeah, so let's do that. So, uh, my one question is how difficult is it to set up that one? Like, if we set up on AWS or this direction, like, will we be getting all the features and UI created or we will have to create it from scratch? Uh, so as it's mentioned that uh, all the UI and features would be given only the thing is uh, like the support or help and all those things won't be or like the other thing is they won't be maintaining it uh, we will be the will be maintaining if we host it on our own or if they host it they'll be maintaining they'll be providing the uh, the space and all of those things so that's what they charge for but uh, it as it's open source software, so we can uh, like they market it as an open source software. So like we can host it on our own and uh, all the features would be included. I don't think there is any features different for the premium users apart from the uh, hosting or support things. Okay. Well, Mr. The, like as soon as we host it, we can start using it. Yep. Yeah, I think so. I, that's my understanding as well. Is that there isn't, there is a, in there of what uh, discourse is offering. It's really about hosting and operating it, um, and I don't think it's really has much to do with withheld functionality. Um, the w after we get it, ho so okay. Let's go look at this open issue. After we get it hosted, there is a few different things to do. Um, one of those is that the default, um, the default theme, we're, we're going to want to customize the theme. Uh, so here's, here's the, what I think are the probably high level steps is, uh, is, uh, Josh and Abhishek go have a conversation about, um, how we want to deploy it and what, what methodology and what system and, and. What does that look like? And, and get it deployed, get it a, a new domain name, discuss.layer5.io. Um, uh, how should the server be configured? So if it's going to be able to send an email, which it, it will, um, if it, if, uh, you know, like just the, the um, some of, uh, some of that is sysadmin stuff. And then some of that gets into how should it be configured, like from a design perspective, how many categories should we have? What should the topics be? 
are we able to seed some content to get the community going or get people to begin asking questions? Are there individuals in the community that might, uh, that like, what are the different roles inside of the discourse itself? Um, are there different people who might moderate? Um, what does it mean to moderate? So at the bulk load of, in part, the thing that Josh will be doing is pushing us to get through all these things. And some of that means um, working with others to determine what this should be. Hey, how much do we want to spend to make it super highly available is a question. Um, hey, how, in what form should we deploy it? Um, but then Josh of the, some of the hands-on, more of the hands-on work that you'll end up getting into is like, Hey, once we've identified how many topics and what what are the different features and functions and which features and functions should we use and which ones shouldn't we um, is a perspective that you would come up with and how, how do we style it to look as much like the layer 5 IO site as possible. Um, there are examples out there of many others using this discourse so. Here's an example that this is um, traffic. They make traffic mesh. They make networking boring. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> traffic mesh is one of the meshes that we support, that meshery supports. So when you go down to their community section here, community, okay, it goes to another page. But if you join their, their forum, it's community.traffic.io. And it's an instance of discourse and you can, you can tell. Um, if you go to discuss.istio.io, it's an instance of discourse. They look different though, because they're configured differently and they're using them differently. Um, yeah. uh, so I think uh, like we'll have to like uh, deploy it and try and I'll see what all views they are providing and what all features and all those things. And um, Josh is gonna need help or rather um, Nikhil jump in there as well. Like, or like, hey, the I'm, a, I'm an ignoramus on this course. Couldn't tell you what all the options are. Why we should we, we should use them or not or like, Hey, here's what it's going to take for us. To, we have to have some mail services that we use, and so there'll, there'll be end up being a number of people involved in uh, trying to figure this out. So, sure. um, it, it, and it's yeah. nice. Okay, uh, Abhishek or uh, Josh, if you would ping Abhishek, and he'll be able to do both the AWS account and then also be be the guy that you get to put to work to, to get the deployment done. Um, but uh, yeah. that you, can, you should. Nice, okay, and finally we're down to the Nikhil's item, which is, Nikhil, you've been trying a bunch of different combos for how to yeah. use Git. That's pretty good. Uh, so I think we, only like the biggest limitation that we face currently is running any workflow from a fork and whether we use Netlify or host it on a separate repo completely. At that time also we are facing that issue and GitHub is in, like they don't have a solution for it right now. They, this, this, this issue has been raised by a lot of people but they are still planning to see if they can find a workaround. The only workaround that they provided was pull request target, which has some drawbacks of allowing the person who is submitting the PR to have the read write access of the GitHub token, which is not very much recommended from the security point of view. So that's the limitation. Yeah. Makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, one thing that I was thinking might be an issue is that we're using a preview, we're using a, we're updating a repo that's in a different org, but that really shouldn't be an issue because it's the, the same user and the same secret is available across both orgs. Um, 
but one thing to, to potentially try is to have the repo within the same org. That doesn't seem as probable of a solution or as a probable of an issue as the second thing that, the second thing that you had mentioned, which is, hey, we're, we're trying to push to a fork and forks have special rules. And do we need to have a fork? No, we actually, all we need is just public. We just need a public facing uh, file server. You know, we just need a place to go drop uh, a, a collection of folders and files, static content to be able to point to. And when that static content is configured and published that it, it needs to be configured with its own root level folder pointed in the right way, like so that it displays correct. So it has all the right relative links. It, anyway, so, so yeah, it, let me go create a, a repo, a, a new blank repo and get the same permissions going on uh, so yeah. that you can. So, okay. okay. So another thing with the approach you mentioned about uh, push into a separate repo and creating different directory structures, root directory for a particular PR, and getting a preview from the like layer five slash PR sixteen fifty slash the home page. That is it. the issue with that is like I tried that one; it was working, but the issue was with the assets. Like uh, the assets were not getting correctly uh, redacted to that particular link. Like uh, the images were coming up for a few of them, but not few. It might be a path issue, but the external libraries that we use like uh, a slider or something like that, or the Gatsby image basically, they were have, we were facing issues with that. But I saw a plugin named asset prefix path, something like that. I'm not sure how much like, Friendly that would be to use it because the main issue being that we are hosting the site. There would be two redirects basically, like layer five last dot github dot io slash layer five, then again slash pr name, then again the home page. So there will be two level of redirects that is causing the biggest issue. If there would have been only one level of redirect, then I think it would have been easy, better or easier. But that is an issue, but I think that will that we will face that if we use the GitHub pages. Okay, so the, okay, the, this particular while it can be a pain in the butt, this particular issue is completely solvable because it, it, it's the question is, um, hey, where's is, where's is the site published? What's the base URL for the site, and um, how are you internal to the site? How are you referencing? You know yourself, and like if we've done if we've done a good site, or if we've used the theme in the, in a great good way, if the theme has this, then in concept you just have to go to one a single place inside of like GatsbyConfig.js and just say it's no the the URL is no longer HTTPS layer five .io. the URL is uh, layer five layer five .io .github .io slash preview deploy slash PR number, whatever, like it doesn't matter what it is. It's just one place you go change it. And conceptually the rest, all the rest should fall in line because all the rest of the references that you have, you should be using relative URLs throughout the entire rest of the site. And if you define the root, uh, the, so there's a base URL and like a root di um, directory. If you're setting those two things, when you recompile the site, like that needs to be changed in the workflow it is a consideration to be made. And then um, when we, when the rest of the Gatsby build happens, it should be built off of that PR number, like that, that new folder number. It's in concept, like we, we, we don't need another plugin because before you do the Gatsby build, you just update the config. In, in the workflow itself, you update the Gatsby config.js to use the new location that it's going to be published to. Simple for me to say, like, no doubt there are, will be hiccups. Like we're not referencing in the right way in some areas or, or a plugin that we're using, a React plugin that we're using, it didn't use relative URLs very well. And so 
it, it has an issue. And we can certainly try the, that plugin that you said though, Nikhil, like that is, isn't. Yeah. Yeah. I think the path issue can still be resolvable, but yeah, uh, I will try it. Let's see, hopefully it will get resolved. The, if we are over to that, then the last thing which would be left out with the secret or the secret issue. And if we avoid the forking rule for the site, Repo, then I think we can get rid of that. Okay, very good. So, so unfortunately, Lee's taking another action item. So this this action item is one of the things is to go go create a new repo from scratch. Um, don't not as a fork, and then let's see if the fork was causing our issues. Do you guys have a preference on what the name of that um, repo is? Or, or doesn't if nobody has an opinion, I would use one of those two or something. Nikhil, the was there a second action that you were saying um, I should do as well? Uh, which one? So one of the action items for me is to go go create a new repo, get the secret set up, make sure that you've got all all that you need to try out this path. And then was there a second um, action item for me? Oh, I don't think so. Like only creating a, uh, this repo was the one. And other one was for me to try out the different creative URL. Yeah, wait, say, say for you to try out the different redirect URLs? Is that what you yeah. said? Yes, yes. Okay. okay. Nice. Yeah. yeah. There is one repo I found which successfully uh, did everything we wanted. I didn't have the time to try it out yet. Is what they were doing is that uh, when they build the site for a PR, they uh, build it and zip all the contents and upload it as a build artifact. And when after uh, and they do this in a uh, workflow run and in, and then in workflow run, they download that build artifact and pub push that to Netlify. I tasted that workflow, how they did in the chat. Nice. That's good. Yeah, that, that's um, almost exactly what we're trying to do. Um, we just weren't zipping it. And we're not looking to push to Netlify because I'm 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 tired of Netlify. Like it, it is it's not doing it's not help it's not doing anything for us. Like not in this case. We just needed a public file server to serve files off of, and we can go create as many repos as we want. Like I mean, you know, ass assuming that we make it to, that we figure out the various challenges with it. But so so here's the link that Tanuj was referring to. So before we end out our call, like I had two items to discuss since we went like what? Since you were busy with the workshop, we didn't got time to discuss that. It's with the current site, like I got some feedback based on that I'm discussing that. One, or, one of it is the, like the, on the homepage for which we are cutting out the icons for different partners or project that we are just showing up that I think the intention that we are trying to show is not being grabbed by the user correctly. Like Navendu suggested one of them, then Shubham also messaged me with that. And the other one was the use of that green circle on the photo. Like is there any special use of that SVG or we can uh, use a different thing. Uh, no, we, we can try out something else uh, other than the green circle. 
And we're kind of only doing this in one spot. It was just sort of filler content. If if there's a bunch of space, oh, hey, we'll fill it in with some, you know, some design element just to, but, uh, but yeah, if we want to try out something else. And then, uh, yeah, I think, uh, Nikhil, your voice is a little bit hard to hear. So, uh, but I think what you were saying is you, part of the feedback was that these logos are getting cut off like this. And, and your perspective was that that was intentional by design. And yes, it is like, um, is it crucial that people can see all the partnerships? Yes, if they're on the partnership page, but no, if we're just trying to tell them we engage with a lot of organizations and that's all that we're trying to tell them here. Um, if it looks like it's a crappy site though, if it looks like, oh, this site didn't even consider that they could fit all the things into one view, and that's how you think that most visitors perceive it, well, then maybe we should change that. Like, you know. Yeah, uh, I think the second one that you just said is being the thought for, like I got from two of the persons. I'm not sure how others think. And are those, yeah, uh, I don't know. Does anyone else? Yeah, I guess so. Nikhil is asking everybody else on the call when you see the site like this, with to you, does it look like it's a bad design? Or to you, does it look like. So, so same thing's happening here. It's like, hey, there's a bunch of projects. Is this site poorly designed? And, and why can't I see everything? Or it, it, does that feel intentional and fine? One Very difference between. Uh, yeah, you missed me. No, no, go ahead. To me, it feels intentional, but uh, I think we should have a gradual motion. I mean, very slow motion to show all the, uh, so that uh, they, the viewers can know that it was intentional. For sure. Gotcha. One of the differences between the two sections is that there are links on each of these and there doesn't, and which to a user, it might indicate that like, oh, wait, I wanna to get to the Red Hat link because each of these have their own individual links, even though right now they don't actually, it's supposed to be like a pound sign, it's supposed to be an anchor tag, pound sign HPE. It's, these aren't working at the moment, but it's supposed to direct you to that section. That's bad. That's really bad. So th this needs to be fixed. But yeah, so Nikhil, like, I don't know, um, uh, feedback to think on. One thing that is a little bit of an issue with that section is that um, in Safari, you don't, this is what the page looks like in Safari, which is bad. This is this is humongous. And so is Rackspace. And then these are super tiny. I can't even see them. And so it, it's the CSS that we're using is works differently. The CSS, like the, I guess we're setting a maximum width or maximum height. It looks better in Safari when you're really small because everything's really small. Um, okay, so I'm, I'll open up an issue about the broken link. Nikhil, I don't know if that just leaves you in a state of uh, maybe, <clears throat> I think we should add a caution for the Safari browser. 
don't use the hard. Oh, should say it again. I think we should add a caution before opening the layer five side. Don't use Safari to view layer five side. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Safari Same. user as well. Please don't offend me. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Yash. Stay strong, man. Stay strong. Uh, um, there's a, yeah. It uh, with as popular as Mac OS has become for developers, particularly for our target audience. Like, it's actually the case that there's a there's a number of there's, there's like or it's popular enough that. Now, a lot of developers will switch to, even though they have a Mac, they'll switch to Chrome just because, but still the number will be in Safari. Okay, I'm gonna file that bug about the uh, URL on the front page to HashiCorp. But to Nikhil, I guess like, for the what other feed so so there was two areas of feedback one was on the partnership logos and the other one was what again uh, the maintainer section so both of those let's say using the cutout or like should, we are trying to show oh oh yeah okay all right then yeah then okay I, I see then yeah I I feel much more comfortable dismissing both of those because it's like yes that's the point like. And sites do that, and um, I, I shouldn't offhand. I'm not offhandedly dismissing them, but uh, when we get, it would be nice if we add a few more. Like the more that we have in there, the more it will become apparent that we're not trying to show them all, or that um, if they were slightly moving, that then you could see them all. Like that's not the point. The point isn't on the main page to show you all the things that you can possibly see. We're not giving you all the documentation to Meshery and all of its features because we can't fit it all there. And the same thing for all the projects we're into and all the partnerships that we're into. We can't, we're just showing you some, some, of, the high, some of the high ranking ones and then you can click to go see the rest. The reality is like on this first page, these really shouldn't be individual links. It should just be, as a matter of fact, we should probably just strip off the links like this. Um, we should probably do it, but it's, it's okay that since we have, since we do have individual places to, to point people, I guess since we already have the, the tools in place, it's okay if we point people specifically to information about each of the items. What, what I was trying to say is if we didn't have those links, that would be fine as well. Cause we're actually, all we're trying to tell them is we do some interesting work and we work with interesting prominent companies. And that's about like it. It's a nicer site when you can link and figure out, oh, what is actually going on with HPE? Um, but if, if we didn't have, it, it wouldn't be the end of the world. And, and that the reason I'm saying that is to my point about not being able to see them all that's also fine. Like that, it's not the point. The point is not to show you because is are these the only partnerships that we have? No, there are more, but we're not showing them to you because we don't feel like they bubble up to the top. Anyway, yeah. So, um, uh, anything else? Nikhil, hopefully that I'm not pushing pushing back on what you're you're saying. Like hopefully that. Yeah, I hope not. Uh, you were saying, hey, one thing about the workshops, or one thing about the workshop that happened, or. Well, I was saying that if you are busy with the issue workshop, that's the reason we were not able to discuss it. Oh, I see. Okay, got it. Nice. Okay. Um, each of the items that have my name on them, um, if you guys don't hear from me today, you should hear from me today on them. All of them are things that can we can solve today. So. Okay, cool. Well, we're definitely over. So um, that's it. Thanks, guys, for coming. Well, um,
catch you, catch a couple of you tomorrow, but most of you on the Meshri Dev call. So nice. Good, good. Bye everyone. Okay. See you guys. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.